previous installment of this retrospective, we saw Old Snake chasing Liquid Asalat across the world. Now we will see a bit more of the story. The next part of Metal Gear Solid 4 takes place in Eastern Europe. The city is on lockdown and there is a heavily enforced curfew. Snake manages to sneak into the city by using the face camo to make him appear like his younger self. After all, they weren't looking for younger him. This is one of the most tedious parts of the game. In the beginning of Act 3 you have to follow a resistance member around the city, slowly trailing him as he walks. If he sees you, he will run away and you will lose him and you will have to look for him again using a radio that picks up resistance communications. I have seen him take at least two different paths. One is a bit more difficult to get through than the other, and both will take you to a point where he disguises himself as an enemy guard, and then you have to distinguish him from the others and follow him to the end. There Snake takes the man hostage and they barge into the headquarters of the Resistance. The Resistance is inside a church and their leader is a woman by the name of Big Mama. She reveals that she is Eva the very same woman that escaped Grad with Big Boss all those years ago. She had taken in the children that were orphaned by the wars around the world, and together they formed a resistance against the PMCs. She also reveals that she is Snake's mother. It was her womb that bore Salad and Liquid. Saladus was born from another woman. Eva loved Big Boss, and she wanted to be close to him. She volunteered to bear his children, to give birth to the clones of Big Boss. She also reveals who the Patriots are. Major Zero from MGS3 formed together a group of individuals to create the Patriots, to create a new world governed by them from behind the scenes. He was joined by many familiar faces. Sijin, or Donald Anderson, the DARPA chief, was one of the Patriots, as was Paramedic. So too was Eva herself. Revolver Rasselat had gathered the funds of the Philosopher's Legacy to make their new world possible. There was another as well. Big Boss was one of the Patriots at one point. But he and Zero had a falling out and parted ways. Zero sent Snake from behind the scenes to put an end to Big Boss. It was Zero manipulating everything from behind the scenes all along. Everyone was like a pawn to Zero, a means to an end. It is also revealed that Liquid Asalat is looking for the remains of Big Boss. They want his remains to take control of the Sons of the Patriot system that controls the network of all the nanomachines and every soldier. If he had that, he could control the world. However, while Raiden was searching for Sunny before the events of MGS4, he was hired by Eva to track down the remains of Big Boss, and she had them. Big Boss was actually not dead. He still had brain activity. He was alive but kept at the very edge of consciousness, in a kind of drug-induced coma. He was nothing more than some flesh clinging to bone, but he was still alive. The family reunion doesn't last long though, as they are caught by scarabs, small robotic scouts that appear as a sphere with three arms. The Scarabs alert Liquid to their location. The Resistance has to keep the remains away from Liquid, so they devise a plan to smuggle his body down the river and create a diversion with several different vans, making them think that one of the vans contained Big Boss. Eva and Snake climb onto Eva's motorcycle and a chase scene like an MGS3 ensues. They drive through the Eastern European city as they are chased by the Frogs and by another of the BMB Corps, Raging Raven. She was from Ake, a territory within Indonesia. Soldiers took her and many other children and held them captive. They abused the children, physically and emotionally. They beat them and starved them nearly to death. Then they up and left, leaving the weakened children to be eaten alive by ravens. The ravens killed all the children but her. When they got to her, they broke her bonds instead of eating her. She survived and tracked down the soldiers that had done this to them. Then she slaughtered every single one of them, screaming and cawing like a raven the entire time. Raven wears a jetpack and has large mechanical wings, and she flies with her own flock of unmanned wings, all of them equipped with rockets, and she herself is equipped with a grenade launcher. After the chase through the city, the motorcycle crashes and Eva is injured, very reminiscent of the events at the end of MGS3. However, the two of them can't escape until that pesky bird is dealt with. Snake must climb to the top of the tower and defeat Raging Raven as she flies around the sky. He also has to deal with the wings that accompany her. After she is defeated, she too sheds her armor and shows her beauty beneath the beast. After Raven is dealt with, Snake and Eva escape through the sewers to the river where Big Boss's body was being transported, but Asla is there waiting for them, along with Vamp and Naomi. She had snuck away and returned to their side. They had already had what they had come for, and all the Resistance members that had fought them were dead. Eva was devastated by this. She had raised many of them, and she had maternal feelings for them. Ocelot then beats the crap out of Snake and informs him that when it comes to CQC, Liquid Ocelot has the upper hand. He had known Big Boss for years before Snake was even born after all. The group of them, accompanied by some frogs, escape on a boat, but they are surprised by a very large number of soldiers being led by Merrill and Rat Patrol 1. They are on land, sea, and air, surrounding Liquid Ocelot's one little boat, 
and they are about to put an end to them when Asli again activates the system. He takes control of all of them and locks them all out of their own weapons, making it so that his soldiers are the only ones with functioning guns. He also activates the system that hits all the soldiers with instant shell shock, just like in the Middle East. But for some reason, it still doesn't affect Akiba. Since the only people that can fire are Liquid's crew, the small group of them start shooting, slaughtering many of the soldiers and injuring Ed and Jonathan of Rat Patrol. Having got what they came for, Vamp disposes of Big Boss's body and the chemicals within it cause the boat to catch fire, burning Snake's face as he attempts to save Eva from the fire. Snake, Eva, and the Rat Patrol all fall into the water and swim to the shore as Liquid escapes. Ed and Jonathan have been shot and are in rough shape. Meryl has inhaled water and Akiba has to save her. He pulls off his mask and performs CPR to save her. Finally, she takes in a breath and coughs up the water. Akiba then reveals his real name. His name is Johnny. However, Eva isn't so lucky. She has been severely injured from the motorcycle crash and then the explosion on the boat. Sadly, she dies in Snake's arms. The silver lining of this is that Atacon snuck Metal Gear Mark II onto Liquid's boat so that they could track him and find out where to go next. In the next briefing scene after another download, we discover that Liquid is looking for a means to launch a nuclear weapon to disable the Patriot's AI system so that he could take control of a new world because it was Zero that created the Patriot AI. It was never the intention of the rest of the Patriots for these AI to be created. Zero just created them and gave the computers control of everything before walking away. However, they did not have complete control of everything. They would still be unable to launch a nuke because all of them were chipped and they would be locked out of using them. So they would have to find a nuke and a means to launch it that existed before the system was put into place. Snake's team loses track of Metal Gear Mark II after it is discovered and destroyed, but not before they were able to find its last known location. Liquid was heading north toward Alaska. They were going to a nuclear weapons disposal facility located on Shadow Moses Island in the Fox Archipelago. They were going back to the very same place where Solid and Liquid had first done battle. They were going back to get the railgun from Metal Gear Rex to launch the nuke. There is a fun little scene at the beginning of Act 4 where the game emulates the graphics of the helipad area at the beginning of Metal Gear Solid on the PS1. And this starts the mother of all nostalgia bombs. However, this one small part also brings up a bit of a problem. For some reason, PS3s are randomly locking out the emulator in the game for this PS1 part. I have the game disc for this and it won't let me play into Act 4 at the moment, even though I was able to play through it before without a problem. This isn't a problem that happens with everyone, but it is a thing that happens to some people. But anyway, onward to the fallout of the mother of all nostalgia bombs. After the PS1 scene, Snake wakes up in the helicopter and changes back into present day graphics. It was a dream of old times. Snake then has to infiltrate the facility on Shadow Moses Island and work his way through areas full of scarabs and geckos to find his way to where Rex is held. On the way, he encounters another member of the BNB Corps on the snowfield at the base of the communication towers where you fight Sniper Wolf in Metal Gear Solid. Crying Wolf Harnessed into a large four-legged mech and armed with a railgun just like the one that Fortune had. She was born in Africa and lived in a region wracked with constant war due to beliefs of ethnic cleansing. The war eventually came to her village and her friends and family were all killed. All that was left was her and her baby brother. She ran from the soldiers who would surely kill them too. But eventually the soldiers caught up to them, forcing them to hide in an abandoned shack. Wolf heard the soldiers coming closer as her baby brother began to cry. She held her hand over his mouth because she knew that the soldiers would kill them both. Eventually, the soldiers left, and her baby brother wasn't crying anymore. She realized what she had done and carried her baby brother's body with her until she found a refugee camp, but by the time she got to the camp, there wasn't much left of her brother. Eventually, children in the camp began turning up dead or missing. In her eyes, there was a wolf going around and killing all the children and howling in the night. She couldn't accept that it was her that was responsible, and she created the wolf in her mind to cope with it. After defeating her, she too falls out of her wolf mech and returns to her beauty form to fight Snake. After defeating Wolf, Snake moves on further through the facility and into the hangar where Snake had squared off with Metal Gear Rex and Liquid Snake. Naomi had explained that Vamp had natural healing abilities, and his nanomachines enhanced them even more, which is why he was able to survive gunshots to the head. He wasn't a vampire, he wasn't immortal. His nanos enhanced his natural abilities, and he could be killed using the nanomachine suppressant that Naomi had given Snake so he wouldn't be affected by Liquid's control of the system. After you fight Vamp and stick him with the injection, Raiden returns and finishes off the job as Snake must fight off suicide geckos that are set to blow up the facility while Liquid escapes. 
Vamp is finally killed for good, and Naomi reveals that she is dying as well due to cancer, and she decides to suppress her own nanos and die with Vamp. Otacon loses another love. Nearly everyone that has meant anything to Otacon has died. His love, Sniper Wolf and Metal Gear Solid, his sister Emma in MGS2, and now his new love, Naomi Hunter in MGS4. This poor guy just has the worst luck. The threat of Vamp is over, but the Suicide Gecko are all still pouring into the building, and they can't get out fast enough on foot. Which brings me to the most amazingly awesome bit of fan service to ever be put into a video game. Snake must pilot Metal Gear Rex to escape before the facility explodes. You walk Metal Gear Rex out of the hangar and outside where the base then explodes, nearly killing Raiden in the process. Then something even more amazing happens. Metal Gear Ray jumps out of the water and it is being piloted by Liquid Ocelot. Here is the ultimate Metal Gear showdown. Liquid is piloting Ray, which is built to take out other Metal Gears, and Salad is piloting Rex, which is supposed to be an inferior model to Ray. You show that Rex is the OG Metal Gear and beat the crap out of Ray using all of Rex's classic attacks. This is the best bit of fan service ever. After the fight, Ray is left destroyed and Liquid runs toward the ocean, where a large battle sub, similar to Arsenal Gear, rises out of the ocean. This is Outer Haven, Liquid's headquarters and the start of his new world. He attempts to kill both Raiden and Snake, but he is stopped by the appearance of Mei Ling, the data analyst from Metal Gear Salad. She has been put in charge of a United States battleship. Join me next time to see the exciting conclusion to Metal Gear Solid 4, Guns of the Patriots.